How's everybody doing? Good. So, I got some transfers that I'm working on underneath the tray. But on top of the tray, I have really good visual examples to show you what we're looking to accomplish with transferring our agar. So, each one of these stacks contain a different part of the process. So, like under here, I have 28 ketchup cups that I'm getting ready to cut these into down here, transfer them in. And we can see in these how to find our next steps so that's what I want to show you and first up we'll start with these three here okay so with this one I'm gonna do a little off observation then a little on observation or a little and then a little off so I'll turn the flow hood on after I describe visually what I'm seeing through the lid let's see if we can get you a little better angle so if we look through the lid, we see that our multi-spore transfer was placed in the middle and then it comes out over here and that's where it seems to get pretty strong at. Eh, got a pretty decent spot right there. You could pluck some stuff out there if you didn't have any more samples. But this would be where I would want to transfer, right? So we'll say I pluck that out drop that in a new piece of agar. What can I expect? So we'll come in right here. We'll say this is where our transfer is. And remember, this is about where we trans. So if you look on this piece here, you see how thin that is, but it's starting to collect together. It's starting to become more pronounced. You can look at our transfer and see where it comes out right there is really pronounced and it jets off now if I look at this whole surface area that is calling my name I could go there but that is calling my name now I might take that I might separate it like that middle piece there and it's actually three right there. I'd actually take the two, then one, that little group right there, and then separate out from the right of that big guy over to that rope, and then give that own rope its own. Then maybe come back here, chop it where it's that little ice cream cone, and give that whole ice cream cone its own home. Okay? Then I would transfer those to more. Then, from there, this would be about what I would expect. Now, our sample is right here. It's an air pocket. And look at how much rhizomorphic groups and growth we have over there. And then also, we come here and we see that little open area in the middle where the rhizomorphs don't want to go. And then they come back together. So, okay. What I would do with that is run a. I would try to cut out where they're coming back in and meeting. So cut that out like a rope. Like, down to there. Then hack off the inside. Take the same ice cream cone. Then also, every time I could get a rhizomorph, I would take it. Every time I could get a group, I would take it. And I would try to come to where there are more in an area. And this is also why I use ketchup cups. Because as you see, uh, it takes a few transfers. But then it takes less time for it to colonize. These are only a few days old. Alright. So let me get the flow hood turned on. And we'll take the lids off so you can get a better view of what we just looked at through the lid.
hope you enjoyed that little visual. Now, that was not stream specific, okay? That was just a visual representation of what we were going for, so I don't have the cardboard doodle it out. Let's go to stream specific now. And if you see me not wearing gloves, uh, you don't have to be concerned about that. I've stopped wearing gloves in front of the flow hood probably about a year and a half, two years ago. I just sprayed my hands with a little bit of sanitizer. I've, I've had no issues. So I just don't wear them anymore. So right here. Let's get this in. We have some funky stuff going on. Oh, that's because I bounced the piece when I did my transfer. But if you look at that, it gave me a nice rope right there. That's getting plucked out and transferred. That's getting plucked out. That's getting plucked out. And that top where they're both together. And so before the top, each rope. And the rest of it I'm not really too concerned about. And from there, another bounce. As we get that rope, we would expect to see this side of it coming over here. And this gave me some nice options here because I bounced it. I can take out down here. I can take out up here. I can take that seam out. I can take those runners up to that seam out. I can take that group out. Take the edge. separate. So I separate the edge from the body if I can. So that's two transfers. If you see me talking like that right there. We're taking leading edge out and then that piece right before it. And maybe I'd probably do that if I had enough cups lined up, which we're ready to go. Now right here, this looks kind of tricky because a lot of times you might think that, oh, this is a lighter, wispier mycelium. Well, it's worth it to do some research if it's something that you haven't worked with because I know this isn't really what I want with this string. So from here, I'm going to probably just throw that away but it's nice and uniform well it's all mycorrhizal subsurface mycelium it hasn't really rose out that doesn't mean it's going to and same thing with this one so I'm going to pluck out from here at one two three four five this strain has a lot of work left to do. So, let's get the hood turned on. And we'll give these a look and then look at our last strain.
Alright, so I want to come back and talk about this one. You see how it's got those two, like, two legs and then the wishbone piece? That is going to be one, two, three, four, about five transfers off of that one piece. That has a lot of potential. And the only reason I say that is because they're pulling back over to it so the ropes can, the mycelium can bind up with the rest of the other mycelium. So it looks like it might actually be forming more of the thicker rope growth that I want. So, I think that's that string. Now, we'll give this one a gander, and this is our last one. So, once you start transferring further down the line, you'll notice you get a lot more ropeier growth towards the outside edge, but then you get some filler material that we see here. Uh, from here, it's going to be kind of explanatory. You kind of want to leave the outer edge alone, that way you don't pull any of this stuff over into it so I would start on like that rope there and then from there over to there so that would be what I transferred on that section now with this one I'd be a little bit careful I'd want to take from about where the shadow is over to about there that's all safe. Um, I might actually leave those alone there. Uh, depending on if I'm feeling like working with something for a long term, I might take more transfers, but that would probably be about all I want to take out of that. And then what you'll notice, so pay attention to these gaps that we have here in between the rhizomorphic growth, the thick ropey growth to the thin wispy growth. Pay attention. So this would be like uh, maybe three or four transfers after from a spore. This would be the next one. And if you notice our gaps are starting to close on where it's thin and wispy. We have a lot more rhizomorphic growth. Same thing continue the pattern. Yeah, I'll take that big boy out there. And it's safe to take that big boy out here, even with that stuff on the middle now. Because you see that it's all part of the same network. Uh, this is being isolated off by the rest of this over here. Whether it's conscious, subconscious, uh, I don't know. I ask myself that every day. On what I'm doing. Alright. And then as we continue our transfers. Less open areas. Whole lot nice ropes. All this down here is good to go. I would probably continue the shape of that on the inside. Not use the inside. Everything on the outside is good to go. All the way over. Yeah. I'd get a lot of transfers out of here. And then as we get down even further, our gap is shrinking in really really far there so this one right here is maybe one or two more from being done and we'll have a really tight thick uh, culture at that point it's not a monoculture until you take an isolation where you verify underneath of a microscope and good luck because they stack in heavy um, Let's get the hood on and we'll look at these.